Brazil encompasses such a huge expanse of natural environments, ranging in all directions, that is called South America's Big Brother. It's an unexplored terrain and land of wonder that summons explorers and trekkers from around the world. From there, I went and reawakened my natural instincts. Brazil, a land of enormous plateaus and wild paradises. My trip through Brazil made me feel as if I was experiencing a miniature globe, and thinking about it still makes my heart pound. It is a land that held steadfastly onto its own culture, even during the 300 years of European colonization. It is South America's wild paradise. I'm off to wild Brazil. Brazil was discovered accidentally by a Portuguese explorer in 1500. The journey to reach Brazil on the other side of the globe was also wild. Brazil is a land of plateaus to the west and east, and the Amazon basin is to the north. My trip today starts in the south of the Brazilian highlands at the Aparados da Serra National Park. In order to reach the canyon land in Aparados da Serra National Park, I have to travel two hours by car along an unpaved coastal road. Next, I have to get off and climb a steep path. Then, about halfway up, the spectacular view that unfolds before me makes me stop in my tracks. In the distance is the Atlantic, east of Brazil. The biting wind from the ocean makes me realize that I'm on a plateau. At 700 meters above sea level, I start climbing up the plateau again. Ah, yeah. From the coastal range of the highlands, I get a panoramic view of the seaside towns in a single glance. The highland mountain ranges are an enormous work of art and spread out like a folding screen. The peaks of the highlands are too big for words. It's better than a landscape painting, and I'm silenced in the presence of such grand nature. Then, not much later, the steep incline flattens out. I'm heading toward the edge of the horizon. Fortaleza Canyon in the Aparados da Serra National Park is called Brazil's Grand Canyon. It boasts magnificent views of highlands that reach up 900 meters, and there are prairies, forests, and cliffs.
when would I ever come back here? I decide to get a closer look. However, it turns out that you're only allowed to get as close as three meters to the edge for safety reasons. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's a dangerous place, as at least three people fall on average per year. You wouldn't imagine that at the edge of this flat land is a precipice that falls 900 meters unless you walked out here. How did such a canyon that looks as if it were sliced with a knife come to be? Então como se formou os canyons, né? Antes era um continente só chamado chamado Pangeia. Então as placas elas iam se movendo, né? E o magma ia subindo e ia, ia, ia dando os derrames de lavas, né? Pela rocha a gente consegue ver as linhas, ó. Pangaea means combined land in Greek. All of the Earth's land is said to have been a single piece from about 300 million to 200 million years ago. Pergunta com medo. Estamos com medo, sim. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Chegar perto é o máximo é isso. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not long after, fog consumes the canyon. The valley river water is swept up in the strong winds and turns into fog. After Brazil was discovered by the Portuguese in 1500, it endured colonial rule for 300 years. During that time, the vast highlands of Brazil became imbued with the tears and sweat of Brazilian labor used for sugarcane farms and mining. Quando a gente chegar ao final, a gente vai começar a avistar as paredes já do cânion. A, ah, a gente já vai estar dentro do cânion. Uhum. Apparently, people lived here until it was designated as a national park in 1959. Uhum. O limão. You can't pick the lemons. You can only eat the ones that have fallen on the ground because this is a national park. How does a Highland lemon taste? <laughs> Brazilian lemons must be tasty only to Brazilian people. I arrive at the river that I saw from the summit of Fortaleza Canyon. The Rio de Bois trail runs for a good seven kilometers. The river becomes a vacation destination for the people of Brazil during the summer months of December and January. This path I'm taking is called Ox Path. There are various names with many stories in this valley. So many people must have lived here before it became a national park. Traces of their lives still remain in various places. I feel the fervent breaths of the Brazilian people that are imbued in this land of plateaus and canyons. After experiencing the highlands of the south, I'm heading to Bonito, which is west of the central highlands. Bonito means beautiful in Portuguese. It is one of the few unexplored regions of the world. 
I have come to a place where you can see the ecology of the jungle river in its natural state. The schools of large fish are captivating. A região nossa aqui é uma região calcária. É uma espécie do, do, do terreno que é muito calcário. O calcário ele, ele próprio faz com que a água se torne dessa forma. Ela é uma água salobra, uma água mais... Ela não é tão doce. Né? E eu, aí é o calcário é que faz ficar dessa forma, essa água limpa desse jeito. The water is clean because lime flows in and combines with the salt content of the water, which purifies it. I'll have to give it a try since it's open to the public. A man never goes back on his word. I can't pass up the opportunity to swim with schools of fish when I have come all the way to the mystical land of Bonita. The water is so clear and mystical that I wonder if I'm not in the ocean. I can understand why Bonito first became famous throughout Brazil. Esse peixe é bom que é um rio natural, né? É. E tinha fica meio deles naturalmente mesmo. Tá no ambiente deles mesmo. É meio diferente. É. Bonito is famous for the fertile red soil called Terra Rosa. I came upon an Indio tribe member working the field. O que tá fazendo? Plantando milho. Água branca. Água branca. Ah, de água branca. Ah, então você é cacique de água branca, é? É, eu sou, eu sou professor da dança da que são de indígena por He may look modest, but the old man is actually a teacher of água branca, traditional dance. Agora a minha ideia agora ano que vem é fazer um para gente para apresentar, a gente tem que vestir a cultura típica. Até as meninas também apresentam desse jeito. Let's see how the Agua Branca people live. This is my first time meeting an Indio tribe. The old man's house is made of grass and bamboo. The faded photos show the old man's life in which he has dedicated to the continuance of their traditional dance. Even though it's not exactly the same as the past, I'm able to get a glimpse into the man's efforts in continuing the ways his ancestors have passed on for generations. The tribe's traditional dance teacher says he would like to show me a guest from the east, something special. All the children of the tribe gather too. Que a pessoa não fica com vergonha porque a nossa tradição, a nossa cultura, é nossa segurança, nosso lugar é essa dança que é apresentada. With this, the traditional dance of the Agua Branca people begins. This dance is for when they return from a victorious battle between tribes. The dance of the proud men after winning battle is called bachiba. The women who greet them for returning safely perform a dance called butu butu. The highlight of the dance is expressing their joy over the victory. You can emphasize with the hearts of the children and the old man who wish to pass on their traditions. 
a juntar nosso, nossa força, né? para nós apresentar a nossa dança. É o meu desejo de, de não acabar essa dança. Mas é, a gente quer continuar esse trabalho. Tá bom, pra tá continuar, bom. Pra continuar. Uhum. Muito obrigado também Muito pela obrigado. visita de vocês aqui. Tá. The jungles of Bonito make me explore deeper into the forest. What kind of world awaits me at the end of this path? Then, in the distance, I stop at the sight of a structure that looks like a person must have climbed it. Iniciam o percurso aqui. E por aqui vão, são 300 metros em cima, com 15 travessias. Safety gear is essential if you want to take the trail. I thought it would be a simple path, but it isn't. I enter deeper into the woods. It's the wooden trail that I saw on my way here. Like the Brazilian proclivity for the wild, it seems they see the forest from another point of view. As someone who has come to travel in Brazil, I decide to take on the rather rough jungles of this land. However, the way up is no piece of cake. It is reminiscent of my days doing guerrilla training while in the military. This bridge path in the native Tupi Guarani language is Ibirapeng, and it means path of trees. You can experience walking above the forest in this natural environment. For a distance of 8 kilometers, you get to observe the wild jungle from a height of 10 to 20 meters. You can experience the lives of the Indians, who actually lived in the trees as well as the wilderness in its natural state. In Benito, the roads remain unpaved, except in the city center to let the ground naturally absorb rainwater. I have entered a forest about 50 minutes from Ibira Pei. What secret awaits me here? This is the entrance. It takes over 100 meters just to reach the cave from the entrance. Made up of limestone terrain, Benito alone has 190 caves. You can enjoy it in its most beautiful condition when the sunlight enters between 8 to 9 a.m. from November to January. This is because the blue underground lake is the most beautiful at that time. Então o fundo, na verdade, ele tem uma tonalidade esbranquiçada. Com a condição de cristalinidade da água, a luz branca, ou essa luz que está presente vindo da parte de fora, ela vai ser filtrada pela lente que a água forma. Uhum. Então separam-se as cores, uhum. assim como acontece para poder formar o arco-íris. It looks like there would be nothing, but the cave contains a beautiful world. Since 1992, touching the water has been prohibited in order to protect the microorganisms in the lake. I'm sorry to leave, but I turn to go keeping only the experience of the unknown in my heart. As large as Brazil is, it has about 4,000 caves. Only 5% of them have been discovered. I have come to a cave that I'm told is a must-see when in Bonito. 
The cave in the photos is breathtaking, but I'm daunted. You need to take a lesson first in order to visit the cave. My stiff body doesn't move the way I'd like. I barely reach eight meters. Early in the morning, I rush to see the cave that I encountered in the photos. My head is full of concern on whether I can actually make it down in one piece. I arrive at the cave's entrance. The entrance is about one meter in diameter and at 72 meters in depth to reach inside the cave. Several women have come too. I have trouble trying to look nonchalant. I entrust myself to a single rope. The entry to the cave is narrow and barely allows two people to pass. I practiced myself in the training session, but cooperating in pairs is vital when actually descending into the cave. Because you might hit the sides of the cave if the rope wavers. Past the entrance, the cave slowly begins to reveal itself. Finally, I make it safely inside the cave. The fellow tourists share the joy as if we have become cave explorers. The job in arriving safely is short-lived and the quiet interior of the cave shows itself off in the sunlight that filters through the opening. I can't say I have seen the cave just because I was able to descend into it. I have to see the calcified jewels that have formed beautifully while touring around the soccer field-sized lake. You have to enter before 10 o'clock in the morning when the sunlight hits the lake in order to witness how clear it is with depths of 80 meters. Perhaps this is what it feels like to be an explorer who goes on endless expeditions to unknown places around the world. I have to get a look inside the lake. The owners of Abismo Anhuma, which means deep pool, are in fact these 18 meter tall stalagmites. Life grows even in this deep underground lake. Under the surface is a huge underwater art gallery. Perhaps it is because of these unexplored worlds hidden around the globe that humans do not cease to explore.
마치 바다처럼 시면이 아주 선명해 보입니다. 물이 너무 맑아서 정말 아주 아주 장관이 연출되네요. 아래에 80m의 깊이가 그냥 적나라하게 보이는 게 너무 너무 아름답고요. Abismal Anhumas has become quiet once again. You can't leave anything in the cave for the sake of preservation. The three-hour cave expedition has come to an end. Climbing back up seems like such an ordeal. Muito obrigada, gente. Tchau. You have only your own strength to support you on the rope when climbing. It's hard. When you fall, it's hard. But it's hard to climb the mountain. 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 Don't push it. Yes. Don't push it. I was afraid when going down, but it's even scarier when going up because of the shaking cord. This must be the human ego at play. I concentrate solely on the sunlight at the opening. It has taken me 40 minutes just to climb out. <웃음> 정말 대단하네 대단해 이거 아 정말 올라올지 몰랐는데 올라왔고 그 인생이 인생이 너무 아름답습니다. My final destination, traveling through the mystical land of Brazil, is to Ouro Preto, a city in the Brazilian highlands. Now that I have encountered the unknown land of Brazilian southern highlands and Bonito, I feel as if I am receiving the power of Brazil's grand nature in my entire body. This mountain town at 1,179 meters above sea level, located in the Brazilian highlands, is Ouro Preto, which means black gold. A gold mine was discovered in the Brazilian highlands at the end of the 17th century, when it was a colonial state, and countless slaves were brought here. Tiradentes Square is imbued with the longing for independence from Portugal during its colonial days. The gold rush has left Ouro Preto renowned as a beautiful golden city. Situated on a plateau, it is a famous mineral producer. This stone is also a mineral extracted from this highland. The people here carve these stones and sell them for a living. As long as I'm here, I pick one too. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm reminded of someone. Oro Preto retains the 18th century mines exactly as they were. This is Chico Ray Mine. During the gold rush, Chico Ray, a Congo tribe king, was brought to work in this mine. However, he hid gold in his hair and freed his entire tribe from slavery. <laughs> Chico 
뭐그 사람을 해방시켰다 앞으로 어떤 The Brazilian Highlands not only consist of 900-meter summits, it also has painful beauty deep underground. After listening to the secrets of the hills, I'm on my way back when samba music stops me in my path. It's a common sight in Brazil, the Samba Nation. I can't just pass by now that I've spotted them. A Brazilian youth hands me a pandeiro. I discovered the great power of Brazil at its highest and deepest places. Brazil is a country that lets it all out and does not hide its secrets in its vast wilderness. Perhaps this is why Brazil's unknown is so much more mysterious. Oh, my God.